So my name is uh, Paolo Di Coppi. I uh, lead uh, surgery at Great Ormond Street Hospital um, uh, for children and uh, University College in London. My interest is uh, on regenerative medicine for congenital malformation. So in surgery, sometimes we are facing, particularly in the neonates, with the lack of tissue for regeneration. In those situations, it would be great to create a, a engineer tissue outside the body to for transplantation. So one of the problems is the cells that we can derive from the uh, neonate to generate those tissue. And uh, one of the cells that uh, we're being interested in, particularly in our laboratory, is cells derived from the amniotic fluid. Because most of congenital malformation nowadays can be diagnosed prenatally, we can take these cells and culture outside the body and use these cells uh, for creating tissue for the uh, future neonate. These cells are so potent uh, that, uh, for example, they can be generating pluripotent tissue. So without any genetic manipulation, we can culture the cells with valproic acid and we can generate uh, teratomas. Of course, as a clinician, uh, I'm interested to use these cells uh, for therapies. So one of the possibilities is to use these cells uh, for the neonate, as we discussed it, after manipulation. So we tested this in various animal models. Uh, one that we studied extensively is the necrotizing enterocolitis. As you all know very well, this is a disease that is uh, create fatality in about 40% of the premature baby affected by NEC. And we have proven the animal model of this disease that we can use these cells to rescue the bowel of those rats. So in uh, NEC animal, we can inject the cells in the peritoneal cavity and we can rescue the intestine of those animals, as you can see here quite clearly. Uh, these cells, uh, although are not responsible directly for the regeneration, but they can engraft in the tissue in particular area, like the crypt of the villi, where you can uh, then uh, boost uh, the epithelial cell regeneration that led uh, to the complete uh, healing of the intestine. So the mechanism is that the cells migrate to the intestine, activate special cells that regulate uh, the uh, stem cell epithelium, or COX-2 positive cells, and they can engraft there and activate these cells, leading to the complete regeneration of the epithelium of the intestine that has been damaged. Another big resource of these cells is that can be used, of course, prenatally. So you can take the cells from the fetus and inject it back in the same fetus after, for example, gene therapy. So you can use it for beta thalassemia or sickle cell disease. You can take the cells, correct the gene, and then after expansion, inject it back. So we have done this in sheep. So we have demonstrated that we can take cells from the sheep of amniotic fluid, and we can engraft it after a primary or secondary transplantation in immunodeficient mice. And then as a proof for preclinical data, we have used these cells in the sheep model to take the cells from the amniotic fluid and inject them back in the peritoneal cavity of the same fetus. And we proved that these cells are able to engraft in the lamb and persist for several weeks. So these cells can be uh, then using the same strategies in human for a genetic disorder. But of course, uh, there's a, uh, now the need uh, of uh, using cells for regenerating tissue. And we are not there yet uh, to use the amniotic cells in human. But what we've done is to use uh, adult stem cells, like derived from the bone marrow, for generating tissue like the trachea. So in 2010, we have been able to transplant the first trachea in a uh, child affected by congenital trachea stenosis. We use a cadaveric trachea that was uh, stripped out of all the cells of the cadaver and seeded with uh, uh, the cells of the patient and then transplanted. This was uh, quite successful and uh, we are now six years after, tr after the transplant and the child is doing very well. We have taken this opportunity to use the tissue uh, for making different organs like the liver, as you can see in these slides, uh, or the lung. So we are able to generate the lung tissue from sheep, so similar to the human size, and desterilization of this lung, maintaining all the structure. 
but also the intestine. Here you see the villi and the crypta of the intestine of a rat scaffold after deserialization. Maintain all the structure without losing uh, uh, the properties of the scaffolds. But we have also used cells derived in exenogenic or tissue derived in exenogenic way. So we are taking, for example, muscle from rabbit. We implanted in rats without observing any rejection. This will be important to move on for clinical trial because we could use tissue from animals in human, particularly in neonates that need replacement. So we wanted to convince uh, that uh, not only stem cells can be used uh, for different diseases uh, and even if there's unsolved problems, uh, regenerative medicine is now a clinical reality. Thank you for your attention.